let's talk about metric tensor uh, which we introduced in the last lesson and we know that what a metric tensor does is it produces the covariant component of the vector from the contravariant component and vice versa. So we know these equations equals g mu nu a nu. Similarly, a mu equals g mu nu a um, nu. <clears throat> now, whenever you see mu nu, it usually means um, in physics uh, the indices go from 0 to 4, I mean 3. 1 to 3 for the x, y, and z axis, and 0 for the time axis. If it's i, j, k, then it's actually 1 to 3. Okay, now as you can see, g mu nu is nothing but a, a covariant tensor of order 2 or rank 2. And g mu nu is a contra variant tensor. Now how they are obtained is another question. Right now we just accept that these, these tensors exist and they have this transformational properties which means g mu nu transforms like this. g mu nu equals del x prime over del x mu times well actually it should be let's write something like this rho del x mu times partial x prime sigma over partial x nu g prime rho sigma. Okay, so this is again as we see it transforms uh, like a covariant vector, in this case it's a tensor and similarly for contravariant tensor and um, g mu nu is actually a symmetric tensor. So these are some of the properties. Also we know that g mu nu when written as a matrix form is nothing but g mu nu minus 1. So this is actually a 4 by 4 matrix which means it has 16 elements. If you take an inverse of that matrix you get um, the inverse. Well actually it should be like this. Now you see it's a symmetric tensor so it is basically has 10 independent con um, components because it's a symmetric tensor. Um, moreover, now these, these properties can be can be derived and I'm, I probably won't derive them in, for this lesson so I'm just outlining them. There's one more important property which is g mu nu times g nu sigma is delta, Kronecker delta um, mu sigma and this we already know in matrix form this one mu nu is equivalent to delta mu sigma if you write it in matrix form. We know that if they are equal, it's one. If they are different, then uh, they are um, z this is zero. So in matrix form, they have they have the same. They they produce the same matrix. <coughs> okay. Um, let's consider an example. And um, for curvy linear, let's say let's t let's take an example of let's say spherical coordinates. So 
looking for spherical coordinates g i j now i'm using i j because i'm talking about three dimensions is given as 1 0 0 <coughs> 0 r square 0 0 0 r square um, sine squared theta. Now the question may arise, what is this hoopla about covariant tensor, a uh, covariant vector and contravariant vector and this metric thing? Well, the reason is, be is because using these we can form um, dot product and do you know we know that dot product actually carries a lot of meaning starting from um, very basic definition of work done to uh, much um, esoteric things. So A dot B if they are vectors is nothing but G mu nu A mu B nu. This is how the dot product is. And um, um, for example ds squared, the distance between two points, two, inf two points separated by infinitesimal uh, interval is g mu nu dx nu mu and dx nu. So this expression can be actually understood as um, this guy So it can be understood as this is G, this is A, this is B. Uh, I'm just writing the matrix representation. And for let's say for example, um, ds square for spherical coordinates, ds square will be, we know it's going to be dr d theta d phi g we know is 1 0 0 0 r square 0 0 0 <coughs> r square sine square theta times dr d theta and d phi so using a g and b we are able to write ds square now for this case we know that the basis vectors are orthogonal but and it will be easier to prove uh, this particular identity but um, this holds true even when um, the coordinate system is curvilinear or i mean the the basis vectors are not orthogonal it will be a little difficult to uh, show it right now, but maybe in future uh, I'll try to to give a definitive um, proof or definitive uh, understanding how really this works. So let's leave it for the future. For for now, the main idea was to introduce this G-menu, which is metric tensor, and its job is to raise and lower indices. How it's obtained? That's a different question.